Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Everything's unscripted. I have guests with me from all over the world. Thanks for joining me. Let's see what they've got. <laughs> Everybody's going to hold up their objects, horizontal camera. Let's see what they've got. If you have a, if you have a uh, background noise like a television set or something on the background, if you please turn it off so we don't have any kind of feedback, that would be great. I would appreciate that. Can't really see that. Can't really see that. Let's go with this duck. Looks like a duck. Smells like a duck. Might be a duck. <laughs> Hi. And you know, it was great. You had a nice, clear background. Easy for me to see. I didn't have to like fight with whatever's behind you. So that was great. Hi. What's your name? My name's Megan. I hey, it Megan. How are you doing? Where are you calling from? Michigan. That's really nice. How'd you acquire that? Um, at, at an antique store, I saw it. Um, I paid twenty dollars for it, which may be a lot. I don't know, but um, and then it's got this little like. Pop. Okay, so now um, can I see the underside of it? It's now I want you all to look at the underside of this piece. Do you see how white the wood is? And you're going white. What are you talking about? It's very light in color, which tells you that the wood cannot be that old when you're looking at what to look for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're, you're saying, Dr. Lori teaches me all this stuff. That's what I'm trying to do for you. When you see it like that, that oh, Megan's gonna not show us the bottom anymore. She decided to change it. Thank oh, you, sorry. Megan. <laughs> so basically when you see the bottom, you wanna basically look for the color of the wood because that will indicate. Now, of course, that's because it's been sitting somewhere, but it has to sit there a long time on a surface in order to get that color. So now we know, okay, it's 20th century. Oh, it's 20th century. So now let's see this it, from the side view if we could, Megan. How much did you pay for it? You said 20 uh, bucks? Yeah. Was it a thrift store? Uh, it was an antique store. Okay. Can you show it to us as if the duck is swimming at us straight this way? <laughs> There you go. Now look at the angularity of it. Look at how it's very, very geometric and angular, like form line art, which is made famous, of course, by the Pacific Northwest Native Americans and the Native peoples also of Canada. So you're seeing these kinds of pieces. I think the piece actually would, would have been used, in fact, for that idea of, um, you know, like a decoy, sure, but I think also it has some elements that relate to Native American imagery, the way it's carved. I like it very much. Um, it's a nice Native hard wood. Value on it, about $150. Oh, so wow. It's a nice piece. Time period for it is what's interesting about it. Probably dates to 1900 to 1925. So, okay. you know, younger than we might hope. Right, I like to see it in the 19th century. Those are always based on actual sales records. My values are always based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold. They have to have sold. They're not just list prices. There's not, oh, I saw it selling at Bloomingdale's and it's worth more. No, that's a list price. Wow, I keep hitting that, knocking that over. <laughs> um, my question of the day is about pets. You ready? Cats or dogs? Both. Okay, both works. <laughs> Both works for me too. All right. Thanks, Megan. Nice to see you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. We've got lots to see. That piece was an interesting piece for a couple of reasons. A lot of people have said, what happened to the decoy market? Well, the decoy market, you know what happened to the decoy market? Antiques Roadshow happened to the decoy market. Duck decoys used to be very, very hot, very, very expensive. Uh, and the market really, when they kept having them on, of course, a lot of the television shows in the early part of the 2000s, the market got soft and the values went down some. But I've uh, praised some very nice collections of duck decoys, but the market has changed a lot. And the markets change. It's like anything else. All right. Uh, you're in New Hampshire. You're watching. Thank you for watching. I'll be doing another video call soon for items and learn how to read the Presidium correctly for not so common stones. Yeah, the Presidium, of course, is a great um, uh, a great tool. And, you know, it takes a little bit of working with like any other tool. You know, it's kind of like when Rachel Ray says you got to develop those knife skills, right? When you're in the kitchen, same kind of thing. But the Presidium will be helpful. I uh, want to say thank you for the online appraisal. Oh, well, nice to see you. Yeah, thank you. The online appraisal that I did, I do a lot of them. And yes, I'm glad that they're easy. Any of you, all of you guys can, of course, submit online appraisal photos for online appraisals. I'm glad it was helpful to you, Chris. A lot of you have told me that the online appraisals are helpful in reselling or establishing how much value is in your collection. So it's great. That's great. 
So nice to see you. So the Swamp Pigford doesn't think it's a decoy. Well, thank you for your comments. I always appreciate the comments. Um, having said that, I want you to remember the source. So whenever you are seeing this, it is, it isn't, it is, it isn't, I want you to be aware of the source. Who's the source? A lot of you say, I Googled this, and this is what came up. This was the answer. And if you, if you go to Google, you'll notice that you're getting answers. Well, I'd like to know who these sources are. So what are their backgrounds, credentials, information? Because you could be getting the incorrect information. I see that a lot. So we want to make sure you're getting that right. But I like all comments. And the comments I love to hear, I love to know where are you watching from? And of course, your answer to the question of the day. <laughs> Let's see what we've got. So it looks like we've got a uh, framed piece, a little bit of copper. I can't tell if that's a, a frame. I can't tell if that's a pin or abalone or a, I don't know what that is. I don't have enough of a background for that. That's difficult to see. I probably know what it is, but your hand is all over it, so it's hard to see. And then we've got a little bit of what might be barware, but uh, I'd like to see a background on that too. All right, well, let's go with the barware. This piece, it looks like it's in a bowl, and then it looks like it's got some pieces on it, but because he's in back of it, it's difficult. Oh, there we go. Hi, what's your name? Hey, Dr. Lori, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Don. I'm calling from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Hi, Don. How are things in Knoxville? Oh, they're great. Great. And who's behind you there? Uh, that would be my wife. <laughs> she looks like, she Pat. looks like Pat's busy. <laughs> yeah, she, she's very busy right now. All right. What have you got here? <laughs> what so, have you got? What do you want to show me? Tell me about I, it. I picked this up at a uh, uh, an estate sale. Mm -hmm. And so I know it's a... a a dispenser for for liquor, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it has a glass bottom. Yep. It's Fairly heavy. It's about twelve inches tall. And uh, just kind of curious about uh, if these are the right shot glasses for it, because you have to tip them under a little to get it in there. Yeah, a couple things. First of all, what you have there are a nineteen fifties era. A dispenser, and then you've got 1960s era shot glasses. So I think somebody put it together, you know, maybe the, and, and I don't think that it necessarily came with a matching set of shot glasses. I think okay. people just said, well, these are the ones we use. We're going to put them together. And then you were at the estate sale and you bought what they put together. Um, it looks like it's pressed glass. And it reminds me, of course, you know, it reminds me of a tap, right? So a tap yeah. like uh, on a keg kind of thing. So I, I would say that how much did you pay at the estate sale? And are there any marks on the metal? on the chrome there's no marks on the metal but on the glass uh it is uh it's marked and it says uh where it came from murfreesboro tennessee oh okay all right well that makes sense if you're in knoxville so not too far away from yeah. you the other thing about it is uh the glass is marked and the glasses do not have the same mark right i would Correct. think they don't the glasses have no marks have no mark yeah so each individual glass those shot glasses 1960s nice colored if you put those together and you said here they are you know, as a group, I would say value on those. You're probably looking at uh, somewhere around five or six dollars a glass. So six times, however many you got, maybe you got five of them or six of them. So 36 uh -huh. bucks for that. And then you have the piece itself. Does it work? Yes, I tested. So it. you've been able to put liquid in the bowl and you've been able to tap it out. Yeah, all the seals and everything are there. Wow, that's wonderful. Okay, value on that piece, I would say $65 plus another 36 for the, the, the glasses, which I do not think are a set. So 100 bucks if you sold them together, maybe 110 bucks if you sold them together. How much did you pay? 25. Very good. So you made, you bought it at 25%, you know, you're gonna make another another 75% off of it. I think that's great, good for you. So, so uh, and go a ahead. A couple questions. Yep. Um, so if I was to change these, I have Atlas shot glasses that could go here. Are they clear? They're clear. I, I think I would like that better. Okay. I think I would like a Hazel Atlas shot glass, small ones better, and they'll probably work better for you. Okay. Yeah. I think these are a little bit too, I have to say, um, the bottom portion looks 50s and the top glasses look, look 60s. Okay. Yeah. So, and when you're a hundred and when you're 10 years away from each other, it's still mid-century modern. Everybody just groups it together. But, you know, experts look at it and go, wow, those two decades are really different. All right. You know, it's the difference between, you know, leave it to Beaver and Woodstock. 
<laughs> you okay. know, that, that's the difference. You know, the 50s versus the 60s. So there you go. Nice to see you. Thanks for being with me. Question of the day, dogs or cats? I have both. Okay, so you like both. What about Pat? Would Pat like both too? She prefers cats. She prefers cats. Okay, good to see you. <laughs> hey, Thanks for you being answer with a me. question for, I guess, for me and everybody else? Sure. Your virtual, uh, your virtual online that you do for two hours with the appraisal, could you explain that a little bit? My virtual online that I do for two hours appraisals. It's a okay. live event, a live taping or something. I've seen it on your website. Oh, sure. We do a lot of pieces, things. This, of course, is our live virtual. We do this. And then, of course, what you can do is look at our services, which is on the specials and shop page. So if you're talking about you can book time with me, like video calls, you can do that. Um, if you want to uh, have me respond to you in email, there's a service that does that. But in terms of the virtual live event, you are participating right now in the virtual live event. <laughs> okay. Now the class, which is what you're, what the class, which is of course also a virtual live event. That's maybe what that's I'm what you're talking, talking about. about. Which is uh, which we keep very very low in terms of cost um, yeah. happens, and there's only a couple seats left to the most current one. So if you want to get there, I suggest you get there. And that basically is a class with me. So you're there virtually with your classmates and we limit how many classmates we have at each class. And then um, basically you can have an appraisal and ask any questions and learn from everybody else's objects as well. So it's a class. Okay, thank you. Makes sense? Yes. Okay, hope to see you there. All right. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, again, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I thought he meant something else, but anyway, uh, the class is popular. And, and if you want to participate, the thing I would like to, to have you guys think about, because I think you're missing out and I think you're really missing out big time. There's a reason why there's this number on my, on my desk today. The table has this number on it because there are 470, there are 400, there are 800, I'm sorry. There are 847 other videos, other videos that you're all missing. You know why you're missing them? You are not using the binge link. What's the binge link, Dr. Lori? I don't know what it is. Here's what it is. The binge link is going to show you all the videos so you do not have to search for them. So you don't have to wait for YouTube to serve them up to you because oftentimes they serve the same videos. So I want you to get all the information from all of the videos. At the time of this particular taping, it's 847. This is 848. But basically, I don't want you to miss more, almost a thousand videos. You're all saying, I saw all your videos. Dr. Lurie, no, you didn't. And that's why we made you the binge link. It's for you. So go to the specials and shop page at drlaurieV.com. Scroll down to where it says binge link. It's a little binge link. So basically you would click on it and it will open up a page for you. Um, and then what you can do is you can look on that page. You can watch those videos and the videos are going to be in order for you. You can't watch all 847 of them at once. Sure. But save the link somewhere, cut and paste it and save it and then click on it when you want to watch the videos. So you're not searching all over or hoping that you get videos that are new. That's why we made it for you. Thank you for binging. Please binge. And the reason for it is because you're going to get all of this information that you need so you can succeed, so you can learn more, so you can have fun, you so you can thrift, 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 and treasure hunt with me. <laughs> I guess I thought I didn't need the bins links because I've done nothing but watch your videos since I found you two weeks ago. Okay. Well, two weeks, you would have to continue to do this continuously every day. Don't eat. Don't go to the bathroom. Don't do anything else. Just watch my videos if you in fact watched every single one of the binge links. So keep binging. And I, we're trying to make it helpful and easy for you, easy for you. Your cat is binged, okay. Well, I guess I know what, what pet question of the day Randy would have. Uh, of course, uh, cats, not dogs, that's funny. Uh, my guests are here and I love them all and I appreciate them uh, participating with me. It's good to see all of you. Let's see what we've got. So we've got a shell, and we've got some copper and we've got what looks to be a lithograph print. And we've got a piece of glass and a, and a figurine. And I think I'm, I like to see your faces. So when you don't show your face, I don't like that. I like to see your face as well as your object. So let's go with the piece of, uh, let's go with the piece of, um, it's a piece of glass and it's got a, a lid on it. Looks like it's cut glass and it's clear. And I need your, your, your phones or whatever it is to be horizontal when you're part of the match. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm good. What's your name? Lucy. And Hi, I'm Lucy. Southern New Mexico. Southern New Mexico. Wow. <laughs> okay. Nice to see you, Lucy. So tell me, what have you got here? 
Well, I picked this up at a thrift shop. Um, they had about a hundred pounds of tape on it. A <laughs> hundred pounds of tape. You know what? It's funny you say that, Lucy, because my family, I like to send packages. So I send packages and I tape the you know what out of them. I love tape. I think tape is great. <laughs> my family's like, oh gosh, Lori tape sent us something and we can't get in it. You know, so a lot of tape, huh? They yeah, didn't, a lot of they tape. didn't want you to lose the top. It, it attracted me because the lid was still intact, which is maybe because of the tape. So, hey. Probably because of the tape, because tape is great. <laughs> okay. So, can you hold it up so we can see the whole sure. vessel? All right. Okay. Pretty large, and it looks like American Brilliant Cut Glass. Is it marked on the bottom in any way? It has no marks that I can find anywhere. It's quite okay. heavy for the size of it. Okay. So, so, for the size of it, it could be crystal, in fact. That's what I wondered because I've heard you say that, that it's heavy. Yeah, uh, clarity and weight are some of the traits that you look for for crystal. Also, if you're looking for a mark, marks are sometimes hard to find. I want you to, in fact, you know, go through and look at this particular, um, look, use the loop in order to do that. So this piece looks like it's not the 1930s era, but it actually is a 19, I would say more of a 1950s era American Brilliant Cut Crystal piece. Now I like it and I like the large, um, I like the large area or diameter of that lid. I like the finial. Now the finial in fact, and the pattern is how you can identify which maker made the piece. So you have to look at all the different patterns and again, compare those patterns. And this is what to look for, because once you know what to look for, you can't be confused. When you know what to look for, you're going to know what quality is because, you know, the junk, it's easy. You go, oh, Dr. Lori never talked about that. It's, you know, not what you want to look for. How much did you pay for it? Uh, $9.99. $9.99? Right. And that was including the tape? Yes, I got the tape. Okay. Free. <laughs> okay. I would say value on it in today's market, just about $70. Great. Great. So for $10, you got something worth 70, seven times. That's pretty darn good. Based on actual sales records, we are seeing a movement up in this uh, brilliant cut uh, glass and crystal market. You know, it really is going to spike probably uh, 2023, 2025, that neck of the woods, because it's going to be reach its 100th year anniversary around that time. So that's a nice piece. Did you get it at a thrift store? And was it on the shelf at a thrift store? And it just sort of looked better than everything else? It was, yeah, it was on the glass shelf at Goodwill. Um, but it was, it just looked uh, clearer. And it looked clearer when you saw it on the shelf at Goodwill. More defined. And more defined, like sharper cuts, right? right? Sharper cuts is another thing you want to look for. And you want to look for diversity of pattern. So you want to look for, you know, hexagons, octagons, and then maybe crosses or diamonds, that kind of thing. So before I let you go from New Mexico, okay. uh, cat or dog, question of the day, what's your better, what's your favorite pet? I like cats, but I'm allergic to them. So oh. I have dogs. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nice to see you. Thanks so much. Thank you. We love all of our pets, don't we? We all love all of our pets. Cats, dogs, goldfish. <laughs> we love them all. Oh, it's good to see you. Lori Mikos. I want to shout out to Lori Mikos. She's going to be embarrassed, but I'm doing it anyway. Here's why. This is a person who shares. This is a person who comments. This is a person who supports the channel. Many of you do that, yes. But I would like to basically give a shout out to her because, boy, she does not stop. And, and, you know, and super stickers, sure, that's very nice of her too. But what I appreciate is part of the community. You all are that. And I'd like to see you all share more. Why? I'm trying to do more videos for you. You need to share. And it's true when some of you say, boy, there's only so many likes for this. I would expect there would be more likes for this particular thing. And, you know, a lot of times it's just that you're enthralled and interested in the content that I'm providing and you forget to share, you forget to like, or you forget to rewatch. I really need your help and I'm asking for it. So please share, like, you know, do what you can in terms of commenting. I'd like you to be part of it, you know, but I want to shout out to her because from the beginning, she has always done that. So thank you to her and thank you to all of you. So thank you for the super chats and super stickers. They help all of us to here to continue to make videos for all of you there. <laughs> so my guests are here from all over. Let's see what they've got. Let's see what they've got. Okay. Let's take a look at this piece that looks like it might be a pin and looks like it might be a, 
fan and I'm not really sure what it is because I can't really see it very well. And then I'm going to berate you about not being able to see it. What is your name and why can't I see this better? Why don't you put a piece of paper behind it so I can see it? Okay. <laughs> Goodness I'm me, cutie pie. Come on. <laughs> yes, that's the same color. So I need like a white piece of paper. Okay. No problem. Get a contrast, you know? Sure. So I'm you know. Sabrina from. Hi, Sabrina. That's Sabrina. better. From North Carolina. Nice to see you. And this is not a pin. It's not jewelry. Um, <clears throat> I believe it's Japanese. It's marked on the side here. Um, at the bottom where my where I'm pinching it. And I think yep. that says, if I was told by someone who knows ja Japanese that that says made by, and then whatever the person's name. This back bit, I was told that it said, um, commemoration of Emperor Hirohito's ascension. So I'm thinking 1926, maybe. But so, it's yeah, like a like uh, similar to a coronation collectible from, of course, like like if we were looking at coronation collectibles from 1953 for Queen Elizabeth II. This is a similar type of thing of the ascension to the emperor position. Yes. Are you okay. I'm <laughs> the emperor position. You were just telling somebody no. You know, like when my six-year-old was about to come in. I said no. No, that's a no, right? Thank no. you. <laughs> so, yes, like so, a, that's what the person who in, who, yeah. who read it read this thought it might be. So, so the other thing that it is basically, so it's it's actually handmade, right? So it's handmade by a studio artist, and these are made sort of as a uh, a nod of honor, if you will. And that's very, very typical in Asian culture, particularly in Japanese culture. So value on the piece is going to be about $175. How much did you pay for it? Um, it was free. It was in a, my, well, my aunt purchased a big, um, at an auction, costume jewelry box. And she told me, I haven't gone through it yet, but you can pick something out of there if you want. And I picked this piece. Okay. So you picked the unusual. Yes. Um, and Terrific. Then, it's very heavy. I don't know what it's made of, but I did the ice test. Looks like applied ornament. Be careful of the goofy tests. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, be careful of the of the tests that are, you know, so because you want to get it looks like a base metal. Actually, it probably um has a little bit of uh, applied ornament on it, which is difficult. They have to sculpt that, of course. Similar to jewelry casting, really, because it's small. Um, I like that piece a lot. I think it's interesting for the cultural side. I think it's interesting for also the design side. It's nicely what it's nicely designed. So for free, you're doing great. Yeah. And um, question of the day: cat or dog? For sure, dogs. What would your six-year-old say? He would also say dogs. Yeah. Okay. okay. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thanks for calling in from North Carolina. Yeah, interesting pieces and pieces which relate to culture in any way will always have a market, right? They'll have a market to folks who love history or who want to remind them of, of course, maybe their lineage if they were Japanese, this kind of thing. Uh, you're, that's what you're looking at. So is there something different about my hair? I don't know. It's a little fuzzier and frizzier today. <laughs> I have no idea if there's something different about my hair. Um, I will say that my hair goes into... Well, I'll call it dye phases, D-Y-E phases, you know, sometimes a little darker, sometimes a little lighter. It's always about sort of the same bob kind of thing. And it's very, very, very thick. There's a lot of it. Uh, but thank you for asking, I guess. So there's something, I don't know if that's a good question or a bad question. Does it look bad or good? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there you go. There you go. So let's see what we've got. We need horizontal cameras. The person who has the rhinestones, the hammer's not horizontal. Or the person who's holding up the uh, the turquoise piece, the person the piece is not horizontal. Oh, you have so one person has changed your object three times now, so can't keep track of that. <laughs> That's more too difficult for me. You got to choose one and stay with it. Oh, Let's go okay. with this vase. You don't have to. You could keep changing it, but I may not choose it because a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking about it, and I choose one, and then I expect to go back to you, and then you changed it on me. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> she almost dropped the vase. So sorry, I was muted. Sweetheart, are you okay? Did you drop the vase? No, I caught it. That was close. You have good. You have good hands. Do you play baseball? <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? My name is Meredith. 
Hello, Meredith. Where are you calling from? Uh, Northern California. I'm so glad you didn't drop it. That was almost a, a real tragedy. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, tell me a little bit about your vase. Well, I purchased it recently at a thrift store. I got two of them. Good. Are they a match? They're a match. And they I love matches. I love sets. Okay, good. <laughs> wooden vases. I think they might be Chinese export silver. I think they're Chinese export silver. Can you show me the underside? Yes, I'll have to unscrew the. So it don't, has you don't little... have to unscrew anything. You're good. Okay, yeah. so it has a base, and that base actually is attached with a, a nut and a bolt right to the. Okay, that's good. The Chinese Chinese yeah. export silver, right? Okay. And there is a mark. It's very small. Okay. Uh, Chinese mark. Two tone textural. So you've got some texture, and then you've got sort of the flat areas as well. And yeah. they're about and... what fifteen inches. Yeah. Okay. And great. Great. There's a shield on the back that doesn't have a engraving on it. Okay. And then it's birds and magnolias, I think. So there's a cartouche on the back. You're calling it a shield. It's called a cartouche. And a cartouche, C-A-R-T-O-U-C-H-E. And basically, it's the area where you can put some kind of information, a date, a monogram, whatever you want to put. Uh, so, And if it isn't utilized, People like that because they can put their own cartouche engraved in it. So that's a good thing. Value on your on your one, right? Now, I'm assuming the other one's exactly the same in the same condition. Is that true? That's true. So value on both, about $300 for the set. Nice. Or the pair, right? Based on actual sales records. Very nice. How much did you pay? I paid $3 each for that. Now, walk me through it. You're in this thrift store. Where are they on the shelf? Why did you choose them? What happened? So they were at a Goodwill on the rack above the clothing, and mm -hmm. I noticed the scallop pattern okay. from behind before I saw the birds. Okay. Um, and the woman told me that she marked them just $3 because um, the screw at the bottom was loose. But I think oh, that's hadn't, a reason. hadn't been <laughs> right. screwed in. So, yeah. Come closer with it so we can all see the birds. There okay, you go. See. They yeah, might be it's a little shiny. And it's, we well, yeah, and it's got some lotus flowers and some other elements that are indicative usually of Asian culture, which relate to symbolism too. Very nice. I like that. I like that. Thank I would you. not call that repoussé. No. Good question. Uh, but I would not call that repoussé. Repoussé is really, really embossed, beautiful. And and you want to look at, at repoussé and you want to think of some of the great American makers like... Uh, uh, S. Kirk and Sons or Stife or mm -hmm. um, from Baltimore. That's really, that's 19th century, 20, early 20th century repoussé. This piece is a nice piece. I'd say for the set, for the, for the pair, $250, $300. Good. Okay. Uh, question of the day, sweetheart. Pet, cat or dog? Dog and cat. I have both. And let dog me. and cat. A lot of you have both. Isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> so that's great. Nice to see you. Thanks for being Thanks, with me, Mary. Lee. Sure, sure. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm glad you're all finding me and I know you're going to binge, right? Specials and shop page, binge, get going. Uh, and we've got, of course, guests galore from all over the world. I've heard from you from all over the world, Canada and Australia and much of Europe and part of South, South Africa and all over. Have you ever had someone break something while appraising it? Well, you know, I have been known to be on the stages uh, across the country and someone will say, Dr. Lurie, did you ever pray? Did you ever break anything? And I'm like, don't jinx me. <laughs> you know, so I've said that a lot. Don't jinx me. Um, in fact, but I have a lot of I have a lot of training with respect to handling objects. I have had people who have uh, told me the story of, oh, I brought this big painting and I had a piece of glass or a big print and I had a piece of glass and I was taking it out of the car to bring it into an event and to show it to you, Dr. Lori, and I broke the piece of glass on the way. And I have had that once or twice, but not a lot. I mean, I have to say since 1998, not a lot of uh, broken pieces. People are careful. And um, I think for the most part, you know, maybe the guardian angels are with us. I don't know. <laughs> Have to say that we'll have to say that so but uh seen a lot of objects that's for darn sure that's for darn sure so and a lot of them of course featured right here well here they are here they are let's see what we've got well let's go with i don't know let's go with this i can't really see it let's go with the copper piece Hi, what's your name? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, hon. Barbara from Reno, Nevada. 
Nice to see you, Barbara. So tell me about this. My leg it's, is falling asleep, like, so I'm going to move a little bit. <laughs> it looks like a copper cauldron. And it has. Well, I don't um, know. I think a cauldron. I think a cauldron's of being big, right? Cauldron. I don't know. Compote. <laughs> planter. 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 Oh yeah, Oak Island. I love Oak Island. <laughs> okay, so uh, planter, and then it's got these little sort of in, uh, elements that look like they're brass and a little bit of enamel. Can you get closer? Can we see one of those close up? Do your best, and then just let the camera focus a little bit. Back up a smidge. All right, stop. Okay, so um, how'd you acquire it? What made you buy it? An estate auction. How much did you pay? Five dollars. Well, okay, I like it. I think it's early 20th century, 1925 to about 1940. And I would say value on it is probably $35. Okay. Piece of copper, strong, right? Mm -hmm. Copper is a good, strong base metal. And then it has these elements that are actually in size for decoration for the most part. And then it's a pattern that that repeats. What I also like, go blue, Mary. What I also <laughs> like, of course, is the step down, right, base, which usually puts us somewhere in that uh, 1930s era, sort of art deco in mm -hmm. terms of its style. When you see that, that's called a step down. Um, element for uh, a cast piece. That's what you're looking at. The the um, edge, which of course is scalloped, right? Um, and then the inside, you're noticing that the inside doesn't look very good, which oftentimes means that we're going to put plant material in it, whether it's a plant itself with actual dirt and soil, or if it's going to be in fact something else, but uh, hammered all the way around. And the ridge is also what you see. You see the ridge, you can actually feel the ridge around the scalloped area. Yeah. When you're looking at that, right, that oftentimes will tell you that you're looking at a piece from the 1930s, early 20th century. You don't see those later. Oftentimes later, it, that's not going to be there. That's more attention to detail that you don't see usually after World War II. So hope that helps. Hope that helps. Good Thank day, you for buddy. the super chats and the super stickers. Keep them coming. Hey, one more thing before you go. Remind me where you're calling from. Reno, Nevada. Okay, you told me that. Cat or dog? Dog. Question of the day, dog. Okay, what kind of dog? Particular breed? Um, I have a, um, what do we call her? Border Collie Lab. Oh, you have a smart dog. Yeah, she's, yeah. she's a big girl. Yeah. Very the, smart the, dog. The, the Collies are smart, right? Aren't they supposed to be pretty, very smart? She's very smart. Yeah. I wonder if they're little yippy dogs. My one sister has little, what I call yippy dogs. <laughs> you know, they're very cute. They're very cute. They're sweet. You know, you want to just hug them. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Hugging a big mitten. I love them. <laughs> but the collies are gorgeous. So it's a collie lab. Fun. Must be a fun dog. She is. She definitely yeah. is. Nice to see Thank you. Me. You're fun too. Thank you, Thanks Dr. For, Thanks for being with me, honey. So she did okay. But remember, certain materials you want to think about. That was nice and decorative. But again, value not too high. Why? A lot of them out there, right? And functional objects, right? Oh, goodness. I just looked up on eBay, Chinese silver vase, and the first result was very similar to what she had. And, and one price was like $375 American dollars, so the ladies was worth double that. Okay. So the price of one was $375, so the ladies was worth double that. Well, gee, Ministry of Metals, you're wrong. And here's why you're wrong. Because you're looking at a list price. You don't know the background of the person who listed it. You don't know whether or not they know anything about the market. You don't know whether or not that's a buy it now. And you didn't look at, at sales records, right? And that's only one place that you looked. You looked in one place. Even if you looked at sold records, right? You don't know what was happening in the market when it sold. You don't know, in fact, whether or not you could find another one that sold in a different environment for more. Be careful when you only look one place. So many of you will say, I looked on eBay. Well, that's great. You can look there. It's not that anything's wrong with that, but I want you to look at all different parts of the market. Do you know the places where oftentimes that type of silver will sell? Most of it doesn't sell for highest prices on eBay. Oh, I didn't know that. I know, which is why you need the appraised value and why you need to understand the market, not just look something up on eBay. The people who are doing that really don't have an, a broad understanding of how the market works. But again, I know everybody needs a starting point. 
Uh, Dr. Lori, can you tell us about the camera on your table? Is it a Polaroid? No, it is not a Polaroid. Uh, this particular camera, in fact, um, is a mid 20th century. And here's one part of the, the case. And here's the other part of the case. And there's lots of stuff that's oftentimes on my table. Um, antique cameras, uh, this one's vintage, not antique, because it's not 100 years old. But vintage cameras can be very valuable. A lot of people actually look for them. And they even look for the accessory pieces um, on some of my videos, you know, some of those 847 other videos that you may not have seen because you're not using the binge link. Uh, I talk about cameras. I talk about land cameras, Polaroid cameras, pleaser cameras, cameras that, of course, have the um, the automatic where all of a sudden the um, uh, the the print comes right out of the camera. Many cameras that I've talked about a couple in, in more than a couple of videos right there. So get that binge link. Check it out. Nice to see you. Good question, too. Uh, the value of the one on my table is about 50 bucks. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we've got. My guests are here. What fun tonight. Let's see what we've got. All right. We've got that piece. We've got that piece. We've got what looks like a stamp. I uh, can't see because of the... I can't really... That one's too much in the dark. The, the glass thing is too much in the bar dark. It kind of looks like a sconce, but I'm not really sure... Uh, I have to go, I guess, hmm, kind of hard to choose. Ooh. I have to go with this uh, ring. Ooh. <laughs> go with the piece of jewelry. Very nice. Take a look. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Dr. Lori. My name's Chris. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Look at that rock. What bling we got. <laughs> where, so are this, calling, where are you calling uh, from? North, North Carolina. All right. So what did, how'd you acquire this? And, you know, is there some lucky guy or lucky girl who's going to get it? Yeah, my wife, she owns it. Ah, <laughs> I like to hear this. Is she a happy person? She's going to she be is. happier. She is. <laughs> okay. How'd you acquire it? So this was on uh, shopgoodwill.com. It was the auction. Okay. Um, I paid 180 Okay. It's a 14K white gold. Okay. And the stone is a spinel. Can you get it closer? Yeah, get it closer so we can see that nice white gold. Here's a couple things I like. Can you hold it right there, Chris? I can. Okay, baby. Here's what I like about it. I like, first of all, the way in which we have all of the wrapped wires of the white gold, okay? I would like to see stronger prongs than the wires. I wish they did the wires because it's a nice attention to that rope detail. Kind of feels a little David Yerman-ish, not quite, but ish. And then I would like to see nice, strong prongs. I think those are going to be fine, but I want your wife once a year on her birthday, go into a jewelry store and have those prongs checked so she doesn't lose it. And while she's there, she could pick something else up for herself because it's her birthday and she should treat herself well. Right, Chris? Sounds good. Okay. That's one thing. The spinel is probably worth about $250 to $350. And then you've got to take into account the white gold setting. So you're probably at around 500 bucks for this ring. Okay, great. Not bad. Not yeah, bad. Now, that, that's a retail value based on similar pieces. And a lot of it has to do with the color, right? Did you test it as Spinel on the Presidium Gem Tester? I did it. We do not have that yet. We have the diamond and the uh, loop. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for doing that. But uh, because that helps support us, we get compensation when you buy some of the pro any of the products from us. But what I would say to that is, show me the show me the ring as so like show me the 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 stone. Oh goodness, Lori. Yeah, show me that. That's what I want. That's what I want to see. Tilt, tilt, tilt up, tilt up. Up, up, stop. There it is. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Color's nice. Color's going to be what it is. I would say $500 for it. Uh, that's retail, right? And remember, jewelry has a high retail threshold. Okay. Does it fit her finger? Does it have to be sized? It actually did. It fits it perfect. It fits it perfect. Yeah, it's a good size. Then, then it was supposed to be hers. Tell her to wear it in good health. And before you go, I want to know what's her first name? Uh, Tylee. Tylene, and I want to know cat or dog, your favorite pet, and I want to know hers too. Oh, uh, both dog. Both dog. Okay, good to see you, Chris. That you was a too. nice gift. Thank you. Enjoy, honey. <laughs> nice piece, nice piece. So remember, uh, Sterling's, if, if that were set in silver and it didn't fit her hand, didn't fit her finger, it's, it's more difficult, of course, to size Sterling. So the fact that it's white gold is better. If, if it had to be sized to fit her. So be aware of that uh, with pieces like that. I like that ring. I thought that ring was nice. I thought that ring was nice. So that's a good piece as well. So we've got guests galore all over. 
and they're showing me their stuff. Everything's unscripted. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Let's see what we've got. Okay, we've got a little Celtic piece there, and we've got a piece that looks like a uh, print of some sort. We've got a, a piece that looks like acrylic painting. Let's go with this small round orb that looks like it could be Native American uh, ceramic, probably Southwestern United States. Hi, Dr. Lori, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Janice from Albion, New York. Hi, Janice. Can you back up a little bit? Yeah. There you go, hon. So tell me, how did you acquire this? I just got it today at the thrift store. Okay. And um, I was so happy you were on because I was trying to do a little research, and I think it's a seed pot. I think it's a seed pot, too. You did well. That research was great. Good for you. Good. It's it's signed on the bottom. but I Okay, let's see. It's signed on the bottom. So it's probably a Pueblo potter who made the seed pot, right? Yeah. And then, okay, you're gonna have to read the signature because it's a little blurry for us. I, I can't make it out. Okay, you can send me a picture of it. Send me okay. a photograph of it and I'll make it out for you. And then for those of you who are having problems to, with respect to understanding a signature, try to write it, copy it yourself. Your brain to your hand will actually help you to understand what letters uh, the artist was actually drawing yeah, there. I, tr I tried that. I was can like, you back it up some more? Yeah, I think yeah, it was more. Like, no, around. back it up so we can see the whole piece because I'm seeing mostly your fingernails. I'm sorry. That's okay. There you go. A little better. Okay. So you'll notice that there is a feather motif, the blue and the white. The white are actually feathers. They repeat. If she were to turn the seed pot a little bit, she was to turn it, you're going to see other motifs that are indicative of the southwestern united states arizona the acoma people of course of new mexico and arizona in that neck of the woods nice piece so um what did you pay probably uh two dollars for the bag so i'd say 50 cents oh, gosh two dollars for the bag oh my god <laughs> that's wonderful at the thrift store yes yeah okay um did you run out of there yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure you guys have your sneakers on when you are <laughs> when you are at the thrift store. Value on that. Oh, hi. How are you? Hey, Dr. Lori. Got hey, my nails done for oh, you today. Oh, purple. Nice. I love purple. Purple. The color yeah. of kings. I love purple. That's beautiful. Uh, what's your name? Ace from Ace. Austin, but I'm in Rockport today. Okay. Ace from Austin, but you're in Rockport. Rockport, Massachusetts? Texas. Oh, Rockport, Texas. Okay. So tell me, would you buy this piece, this little seed pot? Oh, definitely. I love Native American art. And if I try to, you know, collect it, not only to, to, to help, you know, without, with other cultures around there, but really, I think they're the most valuable pieces of art out there to me, to me. I really, oh, I really Isn't that a align nice with thing them. To say? I think that's a nice thing to say. And I would agree with you that it's anytime beautiful. that you can, it is beautiful. It's very beautifully executed and painted. So you would buy it. Uh, do you have an idea, Ace, on how much you think it's worth? Uh, well, you see, I went to Tombstone not too long ago and they did have a lot of Native American art and some of them are pricey, but it's well worth the price because it goes towards the artists and some of their communities. Good. So something like that, that's small. I, I saw retail anywhere from like 60 to 80 to 120. There you go. It's worth 75 bucks. Ace knows what he's talking about. Why? He's been watching me. Thank, <laughs> oh, you, of course. Thank you, Janice. And Thank Janice, you. before you go, cat or dog? Question definitely of the day. Do definitely dog. I had a boxer. I miss her. You have a bo you had a boxer. Wow. Yeah. 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 Beautiful, beautiful dogs. I love, yeah. I love them both. I love dogs yeah. and cats. <laughs> so fun, fun, <laughs> fun. Nice to see you. You too. Thank you so much, Dr. My Lori. pleasure. I made the question of the day pretty easy for you today. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. Thanks to my guests. See you next time. Don't forget to share and binge.